good afternoon, folks. Right, let's just get it done. Paper three. Tomorrow's going to be A2. Oh, it's going to be worse. <laughs> okay, so let's get the paper three done from June 2020. Let's crack on. Uh, I'm just going to wait for my other screen to do what it's meant to do and also get my chat sorted. <coughs> um, so there we go. Wait. All working fine. I can get rid of that now. Don't need that. Goodbye. Let's get rid of that. Okay, right. Share screen and then switch to my clip cam. Switch to this guy. Mm -hmm. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, let's get straight on with paper three. Let's get this boxed off. That means an entire set of AS papers have been done in a day. It's quite nice to do. Okie dokie. Right. Paper three. Now, paper threes are. So they're always an interesting thing to compare paper one, two, and three. I've done all three today. So paper one was easier than paper two. Paper two had its its difficulties and more challenging questions, and I got a couple of the uh, multiple choice wrong, um, but really great adaptations to make there and a couple of improvements I could have done. Uh, but paper threes are an odd one, because paper threes are really about the practical settings, and some of the questions can be very obscure. So it's going to be interesting to see what this paper's like. Um, I will say, though, that paper three is your saving grace because it's incredibly repetitive. And I mean, like, seriously repetitive. Like, if you do, if you just spent a day and did five paper threes, by the end of the paper, by the, by the fifth paper, as long as you're marking them as you're going along, by the time you get to do the fifth one, you'll be absolutely sorted for paper five, and you will be, you will always do well in it. It's very repetitive, even though the questions seem a little bit obscure. There's loads and loads of similarities. So let's crack on. Okay, this is a nice short paper. This is only an hour and 20, much shorter than the other two. So this should be a quick one, really. 50 marks instead of 80. Okay, so a white anhydrous crystalline solid contains one cation and one anion. Well, the first thing that we can do straight off the bat here is recognize that it's white. Yeah, and what that means is it's not going to contain a transition metal. Even though there's a clause at A2 about anhydrous, usually a white, but this is a white solid. So what that means is it's very unlikely for it to contain a transition metal. But it could. Um, so it is one anion, one cation. The solid A was heated in a test tube and observations were made. Okay, so we're doing decomposition of either a carbonate or a, or a nitrate, and this is going to be focusing on group two. So that's where it comes in in the specification. This is stability of group two nitrates and carbonates. Now, as we go down the group, they become more stable and require greater heating. Same thing for the group ones, by the way. You can apply the same rules. The brown gas is NO2. Yeah, so the brown gas, it says identify any more from the two gases. So the brown gas, NO2, is brown gas got to know him. We've seen him already today in the paper two. Uh, and then the other one is a glowing splint relit. This is O2 is the other gas. Is the other gas. Okay, next. Identify my name or formula, the anion present. So if it was NO, NO2, then this must have been a nitrate. Now, if you decide to go for the, the name, then it needs to be nitrate, ion, ion, yeah, but by formula, you need the minus, so NO3 minus. Lots of people put NO3, and they forget their charge. Just bear, be aware. The flame test was carried out, and a green color was seen. Now, if it had been green-blue, I would have said copper, but this is green. Now, this is the extension from GCSE. So with GCSE, you don't have many flame tests. I think five. Red, yellow, lilac, orange, red, and blue-green. Um, whereas this is your green, a true green, this is barium. So the identification of this ion is barium 2 plus. Now that's actually quite interesting because barium, barium nitrate is the most stable of the group 2 nitrates. So I've got a doubt in my mind there, but still. <clears throat> um, give the formula of this solid A and the formula, give the formula of, oh, oh, okay, hang on a sec. Flame test was carried out, so the anion... Okay, so I'm going to say, what was solid A? Solid A contains, so the, the solid A give the formula. So this is barium nitrate. 
barium nitrate is solid A. And then the white solid, the white solid is what's remaining in the test tube. That's going to be the barium oxide that's left over. So just to explain to you the equation, the barium nitrate, the group two nitrate, when you heat it, now this will require some serious baking, being baking, ha, serious baking, um, baking, because it's, it's the most stable of the two, but it will decompose at high enough temperatures and you'll get these two. That's what you get. Uh, balance the equation with barium, two nitrogens, two nitrogens, and then oxygens, you're just gonna go six on this side. And then we've got one, five, let's go for half a mole of that guy. So that's that's the process that's occurring in the in the test tube. It's the decomposition of a nitrate. As I said, they become more stable as you go down the group. It's because it's not polarized as much. If you want more details, please ask on the chat and I'll uh, explain that a bit more. Okay, five centimeters cubed of aqueous solution of A was placed in two, two test tubes. So they've created a solution of this. So they've put in a test tube, they've put barium nitrate. So I'm gonna have barium two plus and nitrate ions. Addition of sodium hydroxide would form barium hydroxide, which is very soluble, so no change. Um, however, the addition of sulfuric acid will form a white precipitate. I'll put PPT, I wouldn't do that in an exam at white precipitate properly. Um, in the table, give you observations you'd expect to make two marks. That's fine. By the way, just to explain why, barium is a big ion, Ba2+, and the hydroxide ion is tiny. What that means is very soluble, so you see nothing. But the barium ion will bind permanently to the big fat sulfate ion and form insoluble barium sulfate. I don't like that line. It's not pervalent. It's ionic, but still. Cool. Fine. Next. Question number two, a student was provided with the aqueous solutions of four compounds, hydrochloric acid, potassium carbonate, silver nitrate, and sodium chloride. Four bottles labeled B, C, D, and E, which contained one of the solutions. The student mixed pairs of the solution to determine which was which on the bottle. The results are below. Okay. Uh, B and C. So, okay, B and C are white precipitate forms which did not dissolve on the addition of dilute nitric acid. So a white precipitate is going to be, so, so it's gonna be silver nitrate is either B or C. And C, it could have done it with all of them. So C could be all of them at this point. The reason being is the silver ion will bind to the silver, to the chloride ion to form silver chloride, a white precipitate. Oh no, can't be, can't be, can't be that one. That one's not C. That can't be C. The reason being is it, silver carbonate will form a white solid. Silver, mm, I'll do this properly. Ag plus will react with, no, two Ag pluses will react with the carbonate ion to form silver carbonate. Now, silver carbonate is a white precipitate. However, silver carbonate will be destroyed. Silver carbonate will be destroyed on the addition of nitric acid. So if you add nitric acid, H+, plus, you form silver nitrate plus water and CO2. So it can't be, it can't be C, can't be C, could be any others. Yeah. Well, that could actually be B as well, couldn't it? Could be the other way around. Could be the other way around. So, okay, next one. B and D. So we've done B again. A precipitate forms which dissolved with effervescence on the addition of nitric acid. Right, so we kept one the same and changed the other, and we've kept the white precipitate, which means silver nitrate is probably going to be B. That's going to be B. And then D is going to be the carbonate, because it redissolved. Yeah, that makes sense. So Bs are all gone at that point. Next. Next. B and E, a white precipitate formed, yeah, which did not dissolve on the addition of nitric acid. So... Um, that one could now be E, and that one could be E. Silver nitrate is definitely not C now. It could be either one. Right, C and D. If I put C and D together, oh, oh dear, effervescence with bubbling. Well, that wouldn't work. The only other one there, 
effervescence with a colorless gas, that would be an acid carbonate. So that's, so acid carbonate. The other addition there in nitric acid, the Ds are there are common, effervescence, addition of nitric acid. So D is the carbonate, but C is going to be the acid. C is the hydrochloric acid. Yeah, that makes sense. C and D. Yeah, 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 that makes total sense. C and D, that works. And then therefore that's gonna be E. Blimey, okay? That's my logic. I hope that makes sense to everyone. So B is silver nitrate. Use the identity, silver nitrate. And then C is HCl. D is the potassium carbonate, K2CO3. And E is sodium chloride. So just to say, by the way, if I have E and C together, nothing should happen. Yeah. D and E, D and E won't do anything. That's correct. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. To identify the cation and sodium chloride and potassium carbonate, a student carried out a flame test. Okay. Following method, a sample of solid sodium chloride was placed on a watch glass with a few drops of concentrated nitric acid were added and, a, and the solid were mixed together to form a paste. WTF? What the food? That is the WTF. That is the most bizarre thing. Like, a length of copper wire was then dipped in, the, really? Copper wire was dipped in the paste? A Bunsen burner was set up with the air hole closed. Well, that's a stupid thing to do. The copper wire containing the paste was put in the flame. The procedure was repeated. That's the most ridiculous method. That step one is full on mental. So step number one, improvement. Right, so let's do this the way that we would do it in lesson. Improvement. Um, wash wire in in high oh, is it conk? concentrated HCl. Concentrated HCl. That's what we do. In reality, you've got nichrome wire. You dip it into concentrated hydrochloric acid and it's there to remove the previous tests. So wash wiring concentrated in hydrochloric acid um, and then dip in solid. Right, why are we doing this? Explanation, uh, to remove, so weird, to remove previous tests, previous tests from wire, and also from wire, and also not be an idiot and make pastes with conch nitric acid. It's the most ridiculous. Nitric acid is stupid as well. You're gonna make NO2. There's all kinds of nasty stuff going on there. Mental. Step number two, copper wire. Yeah, improvement, nichrome wire. Everyone knows this. Nichrome wire is what we do. Explanation. Uh, it doesn't give a flame test. Copper wire will give you a blue-green flame test straight on the back. Nichrome wire um, will give no color, will give no color in flame, in flame, unlike copper, unlike copper metal. Next, number three, Bunsen burner, air hole open. Open air hole, air hole of Bunsen burner to produce blue flame, um, yellow flame, sometimes called the luminous flame. Yellow flame will um, make it hard to see. Flame test color. It's called masking. Stupid. <sighs> Question three organic liquids, F, G, and H. Each liquid contained one functional group. A spatula of PCL5 was added to each one. Uh, a gas was evolved, was tested blue litmus. Right, PCL5 will react with alcohols, carboxylic acids. Um, 
Would it be out without the herds of ketones? No, we don't think so. No. Um, so they added PCL5. Misty fumes given off. Damp blue litmus paper turned red. So just to show you what this is doing. So if we just take an alcohol, let's take OH up here, and we add PCL5. What happens is the PCL5 reacts with ooh, reacts with the alcohol group. Now, what I'm going to get is I'm going to swap that alcohol group for a CL. I will then form pukul, kul, 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 with three of them and HCL as a byproduct. And that then all adds up. And it's the HCL, whoop, it's the HCL which we're picking up there, acidic gas. So the, the misty fumes there are H, oh, by name of, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, name of HCL gas. About one centimeter cubed of hydrogen carbonate solution was added to each liquid. G gave off uh, gas, which turned lime water cloudy. Identify the gas, carbon dioxide. Yes. Next. So that's odd because it said one functional group. Oh, the PCL5 will react with both. So F's an alcohol and G's a carboxylic acid. I'm going to assume that's going to be what they're going to say, functional group. Uh, F, alcohol, and G is a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid. Done. F and G both have molar masses of 46. I know 46, and I know it well. Ethanol. I know it's sad that I know those guys. Sorry about that. It's one of those ones that comes up a lot in organics. 46, good old ethanol. Uh, and a carboxylic acid is going to need to be small. Ethanoic is 60, so I'm going to go for methanoic. I'm assuming, let's do the run the maths on that. So I know that ethanol is 46. I'll do it anyway. Yeah, so that's 12 plus 12 plus 16 plus 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. And that adds up to 46. This is 1 plus 12 plus 16 plus 16 plus 1. Calculate to 1 plus 12 plus 16 plus 16 plus 1. 46. So a winner. State whether or not it's possible to distinguish F and G using infrared spectroscopy. Of course it is. Yes. Yes. Um, just for your answer, wave numbers are not required. Finger, loads of reasons. Fingerprint region would be different. Um, the carboxylic acid will have this peak. So um, carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid will have a peak for C double bondo, because that bond's not in the alcohol, yeah? Whereas alcohol won't. Done, that'll do, one mark, that's all I'm doing. Find one peak, that's one bond, that's not in the other. Yeah, ooh, an enal, ooh. One, two, three, four, ooh, and a branch. And that would be number one for sure. Two, three, four. So that's going to be butte. It's an een and it's a two een. But now it's an al. It's a one al. Oh, and then we've got a th two methyl. Two methyl. We're done. <laughs> two methyl, butte, two een, one al. Oh, and it has geometrical isomerism. Oh, my goodness. That's hilarious, because these carbons in the double bond, this has this group and a H, this has this group and this group. That definitely shows EZ. Now, this is the light one. Hydrogen is light. That's heavy. And this one's going to be light, and this one's going to be heavy. So they're on opposite sides. That's an E. Wowzer. Check me out. State the initial and final appearance of each mixture when the test described was carried out. I'm going to get rid of all this now, by the way. There we go. E. Wait. Bromine water, double bond. Orange to colorless. Orange to colorless. Next, a few centimeters of uh, failings or Benedict's. Right, so that's a test for aldehydes. It's going to go from a blue solution, blue solution to brick red precipitate PPT. Next, test for aldehydes and ketones, and that's an aldehyde, so we'll flag it. An enthalpy change of neutralization of hydrochloric acid may be determined using the apparatus shown. 
Procedure. Let's see if they do a stupid procedure like they did before. Place 25 centimeters cubed of one molar hydrochloric acid in a polystyrene cup. We call the temperature of the hydrochloric acid. We call the temperature of 30 centimeters cubed of one molar hydrochloric acid, or one molar sodium hydroxide. Add the sodium hydroxide to the hydrochloric acid in the polystyrene cup, stir the mixture, and record the maximum temperature reached. Give a reason why excess sodium hydroxide was used to ensure all the acid is used up. Ensure, ensure a complete reaction. A complete reaction. So all HCl used. Done. That's why we always add excess to ensure it finishes. Next, the diagram shows that is that it. Diagram shows that the thermometer reached its maximum maximum temperature of the mixture. So read it 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27.5, right? 27.5. Max temperature, mean starting temperature. Find the difference 27.5 minus 21.5, 6.0. Okay. Why, thank you. So I wonder, the only thing I can see weird about this particular question is that looks like it could be over halfway, but you, there's no scale. There's no scale in here, which means you can't guess it. It's either on the line or over the line. Hope that makes sense, guys. Bear that in mind. If there's no scale, you can only mean that it's in between, so it's always going to be a point five. Next, calculate the entropy change of the neutralization. Okay. So they've given us the densities, given us the heat capacity. We've got the temperature change there. So as soon as we see calorimetry, Q equals MC delta T, followed by divide by a thousand, followed by delta H equals Q over N. Right, so they're asking us to work out the, uh, the entropy change. So we need to find Q first, the mass of the solution. So we put... 25 and 30, that's 55 in total volume of solution. So 55 times by 4.2 times by the max temp change of 6. Right, run it through. 55 times 4.2 times 6, which is 1,386 joules of energy. Right, divided by 1,000. Divided by 1,000. 1.386 kilojoules. Right, now we can put that into that equation and do we have the moles? Yes, somebody was in excess. The sodium hydroxide was in the X, was in excess, and we had 25 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. Ignore the person in excess. So the delta H equals 1.386 over moles. Well, the moles is number of moles equals C times V over a thousand. My concentration was what? Sorry, my laptop's, uh, it was one mole, one mole per dm cubed and 25. So one times by 25 over a thousand, one times 25 over a thousand gives me 0 0.025. So 0 0.025 goes in there. 1.386 divided by answer, and I get, uh, and the temperature rose. So the answer there is 55.44, but it's exothermic. So you've got to remember to give it the sign. Yeah, so I'm just going to go um, 55.55, but then I go minus, minus. 55.5.44 kilojoules per mole exothermic. Circle my answer. Moving on. <clears throat> the experiment was repeated using a glass beaker instead of a polystyrene cup. Explain how the value of the entropy change would be different. It will be less exothermic. Uh, less exothermic. Exothermic uh, value would be less negative, would be less negative. That's the real answer, I believe. Yeah, because it says, well, how would the value change? Well, it'll be less negative. Yeah, it kind of makes sense for that to be the case. Uh, I've got somebody messaging me on. Uh, 
Um, you're less negative. Um, oh, and explain why. Um, it's going to lose more heat to the surround. Lose more heat to surroundings. Lose more heat to surroundings due to beaker being worse uh, insulator. Done. Next. A student carried out an experiment to identify metal M in a hydrated carbonate. Okay, even giving us the number 10 waters. The, a solution was made by dissolving 3.56 grams of a hydrated metal carbonate in distilled water and made up to 250. We take a 25 centimeter sample. There's going to be a times 10 here somewhere. The solution placed in a conical flask, titrated with hydrochloric acid, done. Name a suitable piece of operation to measure 25. This is a graduated pipette, GCSE. Graduated pipette. Next. Methyl orange indicator was used in this titration. Give the color change in the conical flask at the end. Right, so hang on a minute. 25 of this solution, the carbonate is a base. Yeah, and that was placed in the flask and titrated with hydrochloric acid. Well, methyl orange is yellow in acid and the color change two will be orange because that's the true end point. You could put red, they'll probably say allow on the mark scheme, red, but eh. Uh, the results of the titration are shown below. Work out the titers. Oh, that one's easy, 25.25. This one's easy, 25.00. I'm gonna do that, it's 24.880, I believe. Still wanna do all of those on my calculator. It's not shocking, it's just the last one that I worry. 24.85. I know it's the right answer, but I'm just doing it because it makes me feel better. Yeah. Complete the table. One mark. They're going to ask me to find the average. Use the appropriate titration to calculate the average, which is him and him. Neither of them, by the way, are appropriate. That is exactly why I hate at Excel. Um, concordance is within 0.1 at Excel. Think about that, guys. It's not 0.2. Anyway, add those two together. Ignore the other guy. It's too big. Yeah, it's way too far over. Um, so I'm going to go 25.00 plus 24.80 all over two. And my answer is 24.90, I believe. Actually, I'm going to check it anyway. Oh, no. Yeah, zero is important. Using your answer to C, calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Right, number of moles equals C times V over a thousand. What was the concentration again of the hydrochloric acid? 0.1. Concentration 0.1 times by the titer 24.90, all over a thousand. It just walks you through it, nice and easy, really, guys. This is this is a nice paper. This. So far, I'm, I'm really quite happy with it. 2.49 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Next. Calculate the moles of the metal carbonate in the 25 and hence calculate it in the 250. Two marks. Very reasonable. Well, in the ratio, the ratio is a 2 to 1. So there was half that number of moles. Fine. So just divide it by 2. So 1.245 times 10 to the minus 3 in 25 centimeters cubed. Multiply that by 10, which is 1.245 times 10 to the minus 2 in 250, because it was just 10 times larger. I'm going to actually time by down on my calculator as I forget to do it. There we go. Next, use your answer to part C to work out the mass of the magnesium carbonate in the 250 centimeters cubed. Okay, well, we've got the concentration. We've got the volume. And, oh, hang on, we've got the moles. So moles equals grams over rams. Right, I have the moles, yeah, of 1.245. 1.245 times 10 to the minus two. Yeah, bring the rams over, don't want that. Yeah, bring the moles down. Over moles gives me rams. So I need to flip it, lol, they're my moles. Lol, 0.01245. How many grams did they put in the beaker? 3.56. <clears throat> 3.56. Oh, 
Right, 3.56 divided by answer gives me an MR of 285.9. So it then says, use your answer to identify metal M. Okay, so if that's the MR of MCO3.10 H2Os, all I need to do is, and that equals 285.9, so let's minus the 10, yeah, minus 10 times 18, which is water, yeah, so minus, minus brackets, 10 times 18, close brackets, right, so I'm already down to 105.9, and that now is M2CO3, all waters are gone, yeah, now get rid of the carbon and the carbonate yeah get rid of the carbon so minus 12 and then minus 16 times 3 so minus 12 then minus brackets 16 times 3 which is oxygen right after all of that i get down to 45.9 and that's m2 so divide it by 2 i've got 23 so that equals 23 so i'm sodium M equals sodium. Okay. Group one carbon in total sense. My uh, laptop had a little bit of a blurb there. Sodium. I like it. Nice. I like that. Enjoyed that. The titration was repeated without using an indicator. Describe how you'd obtain large dry crystals of the metal chloride from this titration solution. Okay, so you've carried out the titration with the same volumes. Oh, Epicurus, why is it wrong to use 25.25? It's only 0.05 more than the other results used. Yes, but that's the whole point, Oliver. The whole point is within concordance. Within concordance is 0.1, edXL except 0.2, which drives me nuts, Oliver, but that's 0.25. Well, if you, if you follow your same argument, could you not say, you know, if you accept 25.25, would you, why not accept 25.3? That's only 0.05 more as well. Like you could just keep going with this, Oliver. At some point there's a cutoff and the answer is 0.1. Or in NXL's stupidity case, it's 0.2. It's a cutoff. You're done. I've now got a solution of MCL. Okay, I want crystals of it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna evaporate. So heat solution, heat solution to remove um, mm, dry crystals, 80% of the water, to remove 80% of water, producing a saturated solution, producing a saturated solution. Check with glass rod, check with glass rod, to see if crystals form, see if crystals form on glass rod, on glass rod. We assume they do. Now leave to cool, leave to cool down. So crystal, so um, MCL recrystallizes. Uh, so MCL crystals form, crystals form. Filter out those crystals, filter out crystals, filter out crystals, and dry on paper towel. You're done. It doesn't say pure, otherwise I'd be washing it with ethanol. Otherwise, I'm done. Oh, and the paper's finished. Look at that. Awesome. Let's mark it. Let's mark it. Oof. Much shorter than the others. Uh, that one, all ready and waiting. Right, okay. Switch to red. Okay. Thought that was a nice, easy paper, that one, folks. Thought that one was okay. So, nitrogen dioxide, oxygen, NO2, NO3 minus, barium 2 plus, Barium nitrate, solid A, barium nitrates, the other solid is barium oxide. Like it. No change. White precipitate. I like it. Move it on. I thought this one was pretty tricky. Silver nitrate is B. HCl is C. 
potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate. Nice. The most ridiculous uh, flame test method I've ever seen in my life. So answer to the first one, improvements. Use concave CL. Oh, ignore reference to solid powder. Ignore just chlorides a better result. Okay, so you right. Metal chlorides are more volatile, but or oh, thank God for the or or oh, dip wire in concave CL and place in flame to clean the wire. Remove to remove previous tests from wire. Okay, so number two improvement nichrome wire. Um, will give no color in flame whilst copper metal does, unlike copper. Copper produces flame, might interfere with results. Improvement number three, use Bunsen burner with open air holes. The flame is easier to, flame colors easier to see. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I've said converse. Hydrochloric acid. CO2. Alcohol, carboxylic acid. Ethanol, methanol. Of course, they can be distinguished. Alcohol would have, would not have a peak acetyl bond gun, would have a peak at. While the others, uh, OH peak value is different from the alcohol and OH. Yeah, fair enough. Yes, fingerprint region will be different. All of the above, loads of answers. If you didn't filter out the crystals, but instead put the saturated solution in a warm drying oven to dry, would that also be allowed? Good question, Oliver. It's not a good choice. Um, well, actually, it doesn't really make any difference because they're not hydrated crystals. So I'm assuming that that would be allowed. Let's find out. Oh, I don't know. We'll get there, Oliver. We'll get there. We're not down to that point yet, are we? Yeah, we'll get there. Orange to colorless. Blue solution to brick red. Ensure complete reaction to make sure that all the hydrochloric acid had been used up. 27.5 and 6.0. Minus 55. Minus 55.44. There we go. It's down there. Nice. So in terms of the stepwise, yeah. And then followed by, yeah. Energy change, give thing. Yeah, it's all good. Next, less exothermic, glass is a better conductor. Hmm, less heat loss. Graduated pipette and pipette fillet, I'm okay. Um, yellow to orange, do not award pink or red. Hmm, GCSE different there. Moles of hydrochloric acid in the titration are 2.49 times to the minus V divided by 2 and times by 10, 285.9, all the way down, and then to metal M is sodium. Yeah, went into all the process. <laughs> Subtract mass of that from water. Fine. Right, Oliver, good question. So, evaporate heat. Allow evaporate most of the water to form a saturated solution. Nice. Check with glass rod. Do not award some water with drying agent. Leave to stand and crystallize. Decant dry crystals between floods of paper. Allow. Dry with tissue in a desiccate oven. There you go. You are allowed, Oliver. Yeah. Ignore reference to washing the crystals prior to drying. Do not award drying crystals with drying agent. Boom, boom. Oh, I thought it was a relatively straightforward paper, folks. That was nice. I thought paper two out of that year was the hardest paper. Definitely had some tricky questions in it, even for me. Um, I'm going to... Oops. Ah, got myself on. Stop share. Change myself back to my front. Right, guys. Oh, it's been an AS chemistry day. Papers one, two, and three from 2020. Hold on.
Guys, I hope you found it useful. I will see you all very soon. So, yeah.